Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we are going to discuss Anubis, the jackal-headed god, the thonic patron of embalming and mummification, the shepherd of souls, the original god of the dead, before the cult of Osiris rose to prominence and displaced him from this role, and the fastidious tinkerer who ensured the scales of judgment accurately weighed the hearts of the deceased a process that either catapulted people to paradise or condemned them to oblivion. All right, let's get into it. Anubis is perhaps most recognized for his distinct depiction as a black jackal or as a man with a black jackal head. The color black held symbolic importance in ancient Egypt, associated with the fertile silt of the Nile and, by extension, rebirth and resurrection. Both of these themes of paramount importance to Anubis' role as a funerary god. The jackal, specifically the African golden jackal, now classified as the African wolf, was chosen to represent Anubis due to its common presence in the necropolis and desert margins where people were often buried around ancient Egyptian settlements. The scavenging nature of jackals led them to unearth human remains, which likely influenced their association with death and the afterlife. Thus, Anubis, in the form of a jackal, was seen as the protector of graves and cemeteries. There are two main traditions regarding Anubis's parentage. The most well-known, found in Plutarch's Isis and Osiris, states that Anubis is the illegitimate child of Osiris and Nephthys. Nephthys, married to Set, bearing the dark god no children and thus thought barren, disguised herself as Isis to seduce Osiris resulting in her becoming pregnant with Anubis. In other sources, like the pyramid texts, Anubis is considered the son of Ra, the sun god. Anubis's consort is often identified as Anput, who is essentially the female counterpart of Anubis. She is depicted similarly to Anubis, either as a jackal or as a woman with a jackal's head. However, references to Anput are quite limited, so details of the relationship are lacking. Anubis's most well-known child is Kebeket, the goddess of purification. She is often associated with the embalming process, where she provides fresh water to the spirits of the dead. She is usually depicted as a serpent or as an ostrich carrying a jar of water. The pre-dynastic period of ancient Egypt, beginning around 6000 BC and ending around 3100 BC, which is when the upper and lower kingdoms of Egypt were first unified, provides the first archaeological evidence for Anubis. The iconography of a dog or a jackal-like deity in association with death and burial rites appears on pre-dynastic artifacts. These early depictions of canine figures are often interpreted as an early form of Anubis or, if not Anubis, as an antecedent god who became Anubis later on. Anubis features in the pyramid texts the oldest extensive body of religious texts from ancient Egypt, written during the Old Kingdom, circa 2686 to 2181 BC. However, due to the sparse nature of pre-dynastic records, a precise time marking the beginning of Anubis's cult cannot be accurately established. Over the centuries, Anubis's role evolved significantly. During the Old Kingdom, Anubis was the principal god of the dead, presiding, in familiar fashion, over mummification and the journey to the afterlife. In the pyramid texts, Anubis is referred to as he who is upon his mountain, an epithet that alludes to his role as the guardian of the necropolis. In the Middle Kingdom, circa 2055 to 1650 BC, Anubis's role began to change. Osiris rose to prominence, now the preeminent god of the underworld. A new version of Anubis's parentage seems to have been introduced around this time, Anubis becoming the son of, and thus subordinate to, Osiris. Though he was superseded, he continued to maintain an incredibly important role in Egyptian mythology as the god of embalming and mummification, guiding souls in the afterlife, and as the guardian of the scales used for the weighing of the heart judgment. By the time of the New Kingdom, circa 1550 to 1070 BC, Anubis was often depicted serving Osiris in the underworld or accompanying the pharaoh on his journey through the afterlife in various funerary texts like the Book of the Dead. During the Greco-Roman period, 
Anubis became associated with the Greek god Hermes as Hermanubis, a syncretically fused god who guided the spirits of the deceased and facilitated communication between the living and dead. This might look a little random, but the two gods actually have more in common than a cursory glance would indicate. While Hermes is best known for being the divine messenger, functioning as the intermediary between mortality and divinity, he was also a psychopompus, a Greek word meaning guide of souls, putting him, in this capacity, in lockstep with Anubis, for whom guiding souls was one of his chief responsibilities. The central myth in which Anubis participates is the resurrection of Osiris, the god of the underworld. After Osiris was murdered and dismembered by his brother Set, Isis, Osiris' wife, and her sister Nephthys searched for the pieces of Osiris' body. And once all the parts were gathered, Anubis, working in concert with the magical mastery of Isis, embalmed the body, thus reconstituting and reanimating Osiris, making him the first mummy. Through the process of embalming, Anubis helped restore Osiris to life, thereby creating, in a mythological sense, the precedent for the belief in life after death and resurrection in ancient Egyptian culture. Anubis was the patron of embalming and mummification, processes integral to ensuring souls made successful journeys to the afterlife. Embalmers often wore a mask of Anubis during mummification rituals as a way of invoking his divine assistance in preparing the deceased for their journey. Upon death, the ancient Egyptians believed that the soul, or Ba, embarked on a perilous journey through the Duat, with the goal of reaching eternal life in the field of reeds, a heavenly paradise. Technically speaking, the Ba is only one of the five components, the one that corresponds to personality, that constitute the soul in Egyptian mythology. The journey through the Duat involved traversing various regions and navigating a sequence of gates, riddled with challenges and dangers throughout. These typically requiring knowledge of specific spells from funerary texts like the Book of the Dead or the Book of Gates to advance. Anubis was believed to guide the souls of the dead in their journey through the Duat, as can be seen from this passage from the Book of the Dead. You are the guide of the way, who brings the distant one to see the beauties. You are Anubis, the protector of those divine lords, and the guide of the spirits and the blessed ones. The crux, if you will, of the soul's journey through the underworld is the weighing of the heart judgment, which determines the moral worthiness of the deceased. In this ceremony, the heart, considered the seat of thought and emotion, was weighed against the feather of Mat, the goddess of truth and order, on a scale. If the heart was lighter than or equal in weight to the feather, it indicated a life well lived in accordance with Mat's principles allowing the individual to proceed to the field of reeds. If the heart was heavier, symbolizing a life of sin, it would be destroyed by a meat, a fearsome beast known as the devourer of the dead. The devouring of the heart by a meat meant annihilation. Since the heart was considered the seat of the soul and intellect, its destruction resulted in the deceased being denied the possibility of an afterlife. This was a fate known as the second death, a state of non-being from which there was no return. Essentially, the person would not move on to the field of reeds, the idealized version of the world, instead condemned to oblivion. Anubis played a crucial role in the weighing of the heart judgment. He was known as the counter of hearts, ensuring the accurate weighing of the heart against the feather of Mott. Anubis was tasked with the protection of the scale and was depicted in funerary texts and artwork as adjusting the balance or supporting the deceased during the process. In some depictions, Anubis is shown leading the deceased to the scales, illustrating his role as a guide to the afterlife. Though we've already paid a little attention to this topic, we are going to circle back and wrap the video up by taking a second look at Hermanubis. With the conquest of Egypt by Alexander the Great in 332 BC, and later with its annexation by the Roman Empire, Egyptian gods, including Anubis, were incorporated into the Greco-Roman pantheon. In the context of the Romans, they engaged in a process called Interpretatio Romana, where they would identify and equate their own gods with the gods of other cultures they encountered. This allowed for a smoother integration of diverse religious beliefs and facilitated cultural assimilation. 
Anubis, as we've already seen, was syncretized with the Greek god Hermes, forming the composite god Hermanubis. Both Hermes and Anubis were psychopompoi, guides of souls in the afterlife. The combined deity, Hermanubis, was depicted as having a human body with a jackal head, often carrying a herald staff, a symbol associated with Hermes. Hermanubis became popular in Roman Egypt, primarily in the city of Alexandria, and was also recognized in the broader Roman Empire. Notably, Hermanubis appears in the 2nd century Greco-Roman magical text known as the Greek Magical Papyri. Further attesting to his widespread acceptance and the enduring influence of Anubis far beyond the confines of Pharaonic Egypt. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.